The Xbox Series X specs have just been released to the public and they're quite beefy. So what does this mean for Halo Infinite and the PC specs of that? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news informational video when it comes to Halo and the Xbox. So if you like these news informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it greatly helps out the video and helps to keep the community up to date with everything going on. So like we mentioned at the top of this video, the Xbox Series X specs have just been released and they're quite beefy. I mean like a pretty solid PC level of specs here, but almost comparable to what I have on my rig right now. And it handles games pretty easily. So this means that this is gonna be a significant jump when it comes to a generational change when it comes to consoles and you know, a lot of people criticize the jump from 360 to the xbox one saying it really wasn't that much of a, a graph or technological uh, advancement which it wasn't but it certainly was uh an advancement of some way or another and we definitely saw on the graphics towards the end of it but there definitely were some limitations here and i think that with this new xbox microsoft is really looking to future proof their system to make sure that they don't have to keep releasing three or four different systems throughout its lifespan for it to keep up to date with the demand of graphical uh, fidelity in video games. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the specs of the Xbox Series X and also comparable PC parts to let you know what kind of stuff you should expect to, to get to have in your rig if you're gonna be playing Halo Infinite on PC like I'm planning to do. So let's get right into the specs here. So first of all, the big thing that's gonna be the heavy lifter of all the computing processing is gonna be the processor you Unit, obviously the CPU and it looks to be a pretty beefy CPU guys with eight cores of processing power right there along with a uh, clocked at 3.8 gigahertz which gigahertz is determined how fast a CPU can process information and more cores means more horsepower basically think of it like a car engine in that way so basically the cores are your horsepower and the gigahertz or how efficient you are with your gas basically if you think of it like that and this is looking to be pretty solid build. I would honestly say this is rather comparable to a Ryzen 7 2700. Uh, if you guys seen that one, it was clocked at 3.2 gigahertz with a max boost of 4.1, which you can overclock this to get a little bit more, or quite a bit more performance actually out of it. That's the same CPU I have. And so looking to see this be a, the level of, of hardware that's going to be in this new Xbox is quite enticing and apparently it's way better than the PS5 as well. And we'll move over to the graphics you're right here. So obviously, we ever want to know how good the graphics are going to be. Well, they're going to be pretty dang beefy in this machine as well. Uh, the graphics here are 12.155 teraflops, which again, kind of like the horsepower of the machine here. It clocked at 1.8 essentially gigahertz as well. Again, same, similar kind of situation here. Honestly, it kind of rivals what a 1080 Ti has. That's what I have in my PC. And it honestly is a little bit stronger. A little bit, you know, like uh, the 1080 Ti is at 11.3 teraflops and the clock rate is at 1.5 or 1.6 if you want to round up gigahertz. So rather comparable right there, uh, certainly by a little bit of an edge goes to the Xbox Series X, which is quite surprising right there for sure. Um, though, though a lot of PCs generally, generally have a lot more memory like RAM uh, and the Xbox Series X is looking to have 16 gigabytes of DDR6 RAM that runs at 320 megabytes uh, for its speed clocked right there. My PC, I have 32 gigabytes of DDR5, if I remember correctly. And honestly, the differences between the, the DDRs are not too great, not huge jumps. Obviously going from like DDR3, which used to be really popular, to DDR6, yes, that's gonna be quite comparable right there where you need to make that jump. And a great thing to also take note of is the one terabyte SSD that's gonna be on this. So your load times are going to be super fast with this. Now there is, now, obviously, one terabyte might not be enough for all the games that you want to have downloaded. There is an expandable storage port as well that's on the back of the Xbox Series X that can give you another terabyte. But of course, you probably have to buy a uh, proprietary Xbox special hard drive, which is going to be way pricier than a regular hard drive. So for all you PC gamers looking to play Halo Infinite on PC, these are kind of the specs you're going to need to have. I would definitely recommend a Ryzen 7 2700 and a 1080 Ti to kind of meet that standard of what the Xbox Series X is looking to accomplish. Now, 
Keep in mind though, they are looking to release Halo Infinite on the Xbox One. I don't know how that's gonna happen, but it's going to happen. And they're also looking to possibly, rumored has it, to have a lower end version of the Xbox Series X. Uh, that's what a website reported. It's been kind of a repeated rumor going throughout the uh, internet here. saying there might be a high end and a low end. We're probably looking at the high end here. I bet you they're kind of still kind of holding off on the big announcement at E3 to possibly mention about the high end, low end, and what the prices are going to be. I would probably expect the high end Xbox to cost probably around $700 would be my guess. And that's going to be at Microsoft actually losing money on the consoles. And the, that's pretty much general practice when it comes to these different uh, hardwares that the producers like Sony and Microsoft or even Nintendo actually lose money on consoles, but they make money back on the games that people buy. Also keep in mind that these games are getting bigger and bigger. Red Dead Redemption 2 was about 200 gigabytes. Same thing with Modern Warfare that recently came out for 2019. About 200 gigabytes on PC, so you're gonna need at least that, I would assume, for Halo Infinite, if not more for how jam-packed this game is going to be. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, you'll probably have to get a new SSD because uh, I definitely would like to have the fast load times, but obviously paying for a hefty SSD is not cheap. Like the Xbox One X providing a one a custom one terabyte SSD, that's pretty nice. And I would say for the whole process of how much this whole thing is going to cost for the Xbox Series X, it's going to be a bit of a deal, honestly, to pick this thing up. And it seems like they're really future proofing. They're really looking to kind of make sure that they don't have to keep releasing new consoles throughout its lifespan. And just this is this system you're going to need to use for the next six plus years coming around the corner here. But if any other guys are PC aficionados and have better recommendations, please make sure to leave in the comments down below. I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. If it's a comment that I definitely agree with and I think it's something that might actually be better than what I suggested, hell. Um, I even pin it. There we go. But anyways, guys, that's going to be everything with the video here. Uh, if you guys like these news informational videos, please be sure to tap that like button. Let me know if you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what your thoughts are on the specs and potentially the price when it comes to the Xbox Series X. Are you going to be picking it up? Let me know in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you tap subscribe to keep yourselves updated with everything going on in Halo and Xbox in general. Check out the videos on the screen right now as they were about my recent video as well as a playlist of all Halo news that will help you keep up to date if you've missed anything over the last few weeks. So make sure you tap subscribe guys and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.